preparing us uh, for what his purpose for us to do I want each and every one this morning to understand that for what we've been doing in the last uh, I think five weeks is to really prepare us and to position us to live a life that will let the world know that indeed we belong to him it's a new command he has given unto us and that new command calls on us to love one another as Christ loved us hallelujah hallelujah it is also to know that we cannot live to deceive ourselves and for five weeks we've been looking at deceptive Christianity hallelujah deceptive Christianity beloved it's sad that as we go and come as we live our lives as Christians we are forgetting some of the things that Christ expects us to really do and to live for and if we are not careful what is happening will really uh, bring us to a point in future or at the end of the of the, of the time Jesus will come and we will have deceived ourselves pretending to live for him by living for ourselves hallelujah many times and I mean many 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 times Christians are not living by the word we are living by the world hallelujah Yet, we call ourselves Christians. But we're not living according to what God wants us to live. Or how he wants us to live. But we live our lives in such a way. Really trying to please the world than to please the Lord. If we would really... critically look at ourselves and again and again I ask all of us to ask, keep asking ourselves who am I? Am I living right for him? Beloved in the Lord, we choose and pick what is convenient for us to do as Christians and think that we're living right for God. And we leave the others for some people to do. What is convenient for us, we will do. What is inconvenient for us, we will leave for some people that it's convenient for. But let me tell you something. This faith that we have been called into it's a journey of sacrifices. It's, a, it's not a journey of convenience. It's a journey of sacrifices. It is a journey where we are willing to put our phones down when we are in church. Regardless of what call we are expecting. Regardless of what message we are expecting. That as we have come before him, we will place him as our priority and we will put him at the highest level of honor and honor him you see what what happens is that when we sit in front of men that we so call big we comport ourselves hallelujah tell me how many of us will sit in the presence of a big man or a big woman i don't know who that big your big man is and my your big woman is but somebody that you really respect so much can you tell me 
that you can sit in the presence of that person when we are looking for favor from that person and yet our phones will ring and will pick and, and talk and they will tell the person that I'm, I'm coming remember how long it took for you to get an appointment with a person hallelujah some people have to book appointments even when you are going to the hospital where you are going to pay your own money for somebody to take care of you some of us we make appointments for how many months before we can see the doctor and when you are sitting in front of the doctor and the doctor is doing something with you then you say that doctor stop let me go out pick this call and come back by the time you come back somebody else is sitting there and you go to the back of the queue yet we come to church sit in front of the cane of canes and then we can because of a call walk out of the church go pick the call because it's so important to us than God you see you haven't thought about it like that that is why you do it hallelujah and then after that you come back and you sit down and you have missed a chunk of what God was saying and now you begin to blame God me when i went to church i didn't hear anything in fact all the things that were said they were not when god was speaking about you you were out doing what you think was more important for you hallelujah (laughs) beloved in the lord i just want you to really understand certain things we deceive ourselves we think we're giving greatest honor to god when we are not Hallelujah. And that's all deceit. We're deceiving ourselves. We're pretending that we're doing something for God. I'm telling you, what can you do for God? Ask yourself, what can I do for God? If he doesn't even... Look, look, this morning, if he had not given you strength, will you be sitting here? You'll be in your bed. Hallelujah. If you had headache this morning, Would you have come here? Thank him that you don't have headaches. Thank him that you are well. Hallelujah. If he would take his breath from you, right now, if he stops the air, where will you be? Where will I be? My wife keeps asking when somebody dies. She keeps asking what happened. It's not what you are thinking of. Oh, he was sick. He was that. No. He said, at what point did he, the person, decide not to do anything again? And you can't put a finger on it. And uh, she, she always asks me, I mean, But when I mean, he's responding, he's breathing, and suddenly he stops breathing. And then they see what happened. What stopped the time? What stopped everything from really responding again? Why is it that five minutes ago or a minute or a moment ago, he was able to respond, but now he cannot. Even if you pinch him on Philippe. At what point and what happened? Hallelujah. And we can't explain. Can you? hallelujah and at that moment no doctor could do anything no one could do anything but you see for the king of kings and the lord of lords even though you are dead you are buried and you are rotten in your grave he can still call you to come back hallelujah i have not seen any doctor go to the cemetery bring anybody out of the dead and say that live again for another how many years i have never seen that never heard that maybe you know maybe you have heard hallelujah so why do we cherish the doctor why do you look at the doctor with more reverence 
than the one who could even bring you back from death. Hallelujah. Now, you see, let me tell you something. If God decides that you sitting here, hallelujah, tomorrow you will lose your job. What can you do? Your boss can't do anything. You remember the lady who gave a testimony how many weeks ago? Two weeks or three weeks ago? She said, I went to work in the morning. I don't know what I have done. My boss called me and told me that you have not done anything, but I'm sacking you. Amen. And she looks at the boss and uh, is like, what is happening here? Have I done anything wrong? He said, I told you from the beginning, you have not done anything wrong. I don't know, but I feel like to sack you. And I have sacked you. It's the end of the story. You can cry. You can do whatever you want to do. You are sad. Yet, we honor these people. Yet, we respect them. But we refuse to honor the one who after your boss has sat you could bring you a better job which will pay you more than what she lost she said my new job I'm paid four times better than where I was sacked in addition I don't pay rent I've been given accommodation I don't pay electricity bill I don't pay water bill I don't I mean (laughs) I don't know what to say but the point is that I was kicked out from a place and I've gained a better place and he says that even to get that new job was a mystery because the person he said I heard one day in church when I came and during the preaching the preacher said God will disturb somebody to bless you hallelujah and he said a friend of mine said that she was disturbed by the boss that I want you to give me someone and anytime the boss mentions that your the friend's name come to mind and he said I was troubled until I called you and I became free and then you responded you came you got a job and I'm free hallelujah but the problem is that we still don't honor this, this God that we said we still don't beloved in the Lord I'm encouraging you. Put everything aside. Lay everything aside. The things you are holding on to can't save you. They can't help you. Your help comes up from above. Don't live a life deceiving yourself that this world can help you. Don't live your life deceiving yourself that you are saved when indeed you just play in lip service many of us it's lip service me a christian when I feel like I'm a christian but when I don't feel like I'm a christian I live my life anyhow hallelujah Many of us are full of leaves. No fruit. Many, many of us, we are full of leaves. We are flourishing. People see us from afar and they think we are Christians. In fact, we come to church and even our pastors think that we're doing very well. But if they knew what was in our cupboards, 
if they knew in private who we are they wouldn't even give us <laughs> anyway let me reserve that one hallelujah who are you in your private moments who are you when you are all by yourself who are you when no one is watching who are you see I said it it is only in church that this happens not in your boss's office phone call from the office wall. hallelujah Amen. We ought to bear fruit, and He wants us to bear fruit. And that fruit that He wants us to bear is not coming from the self, but from the Spirit of God. The Spirit is the one who really causes that fruit to come forth. It's not by anything you can do. It's by your total dependence on him. Hallelujah. So he says that if you stay, if you a branch and me a branch, if we, the branches, stay to the vine, then we can bear fruit. Hallelujah. But if we break off and we begin to depend on ourselves but not on the vine because the vine is supposed to really absorb whatever it absorbs from the soil to give us the nutrients that we need so we can bear fruit. But if we decide to break off hallelujah, from the vine then we cannot bear any fruit. Hallelujah. So any Christian who decides to do things by himself will never be able to bear the fruit that God is expecting you to bear. Hallelujah. If I want to bear the fruit that he wants me to bear, then I have to really stick by him. I cannot separate myself. If I separate myself, what will happen? I will die. Not only will you not bear any fruit, but you will die. Hallelujah. And when you are dead, you have firewood. And what does a firewood, uh, what, 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 what do people use firewood for? Hmm? Yes. So you will be burned. Hallelujah. <laughs> Beloved, if, we, if I send you to go and bring me uh, a branch from uh, the, the flowers uh, down there, the moment you break it off and you bring it to me, that flower unless it is budded or grafted back that flower is going to die how many of us are still sticking to the vine staying close in the vine how many of us are being supplied the nutrients that we need by the vine how many of us are still dependent not on our wisdom not on our money not on our certificates not on our marriage not on whatever you want to really depend on but are dependent on Christ in this life it's come to a point where it is not important to stick by Christ anymore is by what I can do. So I can do everything. Go everywhere. Except to come to church on Sunday. Or weekday. I'm tired. 
I want to sleep small. You know, <laughs> we, the only time we are not tired is when we are in need of something and we know we need prayer. That time, if we are dying, we'll let people carry us to the church. And I'm what? And I'm the one to Huh? Hallelujah. Treat your boss like that. Go to work when you like. And see whether you get your salary. Hmm? Will you be paid? What will happen? If Jesus was going to sack, how many of us will be left? Huh? How many? Beloved, let's make Christianity practical. Let's make it practical. How many of us sitting here this morning desire to serve him? How many of us? Oh, no one desires to serve him. Hallelujah. How many of us desire to give our all to him? We make desire to make him the priority of our life that everything that we do depends on him without him nothing will be done how many of us hallelujah everyone how many of us are doing your desire does not take you anywhere it is in your doing hallelujah because everyone desires that is why in isaiah 119 bible says that if not only when you are willing, but if you are willing, and what? How many of us are willing, but we are not obedient? How many are willing to go to heaven? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but how many of us are doing what will take us there? That's the problem. How many are obedient unto the one who can save us? Hallelujah. I'm here this morning to try to make Christianity practical. Yeah, practical. Let's let's begin to really live the word. It is not enough To come when we like. No, it's not enough. You know, let me say this. On <laughs> on Thursday, Pastor Derek said something, and <laughs> I know. Many of us didn't probably understand it well and maybe took a different meaning to it. But he's not saying that pastors are tired of doing pastoral work. That's not what he's trying to say. He's trying to say that you guys sitting there should be faithful and obedient. Hallelujah. What we do to God, we do to our pastors too. It is only when we get into trouble that we need advice and help. When your pastor sees what's going on and begins to really talk to you, you rubbish it. And that's why he was saying that he loves to teach in this way to the congregation to, on marriage school rather than to sit one-on-one with people. Because when you sit one-on-one with people, you will spend hours talking to them. How many people have we sat down here, stayed here, ask the intercessors, till 6 p.m. praying and they'll vomit all over and they will clean. But yet, the next day, when they see them, they look down on them. 
and the very things that brought what they are suffering what they are going through the moment they leave here they go back straight to it and then they come back to say that yeah you born by my area and they call say baby you need to feel your career here Amen. And he went, yes, I got the breakthrough. They said, God will bless me. God bless me. But everything, I've lost everything again. Ask yourself what you did. And ask yourself what Jesus said. He told the man, he said that, look, today you are healed. But if you go back into your foolishness, what will come upon you? This sickness is more. What will come? The sickness that will come will be more than this one. Listen to me and listen to me carefully. Watch Jesus closely and stay close to his words and begin to obey them. Jesus said, when a spirit leaves you, he goes on vacation. But he'll come back. he knows know your address. He's been there for how many years? Go and look today. I'll give you a visa and give you tickets and send you wherever you want to go. Go and stay there for how many years? 20 years. And come back and tell me you know where your house is. Won't you know where you have to go? You know, so the demon that has lived with you for how many years, he knows where you are. So he comes back to inspect whether the one, you are really submissive to the one who saved you and you still have his protection. If he comes and there is nothing, what does he do? He says, this time, I have to fortify my, my, <laughs> my position. In the past, I think I was weak. So now, I need help. He goes and brings, I like that word, reinforcement. You see, when police are sent to somebody to go and arrest, and when they go, and the thing is tough, they call for what? So when he comes... And he sees the place empty. He said, you see, when I came at first, because I was alone, this one, the one who was really trying to help him, was able to defeat me. I need reinforcement. So he goes and calls seven, not his size. So. If he was like this, he brings what? Seven times this macho and they come and they guard hallelujah beloved in the Lord what am I talking about our obedience will help us to bear the fruit the kind of fruit that we ought to bear we have looked at six of the fruit that comes from the spirit and we will look at the last three today. Amen. We've looked at love. We've looked at joy. We've looked at peace two weeks ago. Last week, we looked at what? Forbearance, all long suffering, all patience. And then we looked at goodness and kindness. And this morning, we're going to look at the last three faithfulness, gentleness, and what? Self-control. Faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Each and every one is extremely important. Because you, you cannot say that I'm doing this one and leaving this one. We ought to begin 
to manifest all this because it comes from the same spirit so if that same spirit is in us he is doing everything through us hallelujah we are really being supplied every nutrient that we need from the same vine it is from the same root source hallelujah so we ought to begin to manifest all this i can't say i love but i don't have patience this is the character of a christian this is what you have to see in a christian you have to see a christian as a faithful person as a gentle person hallelujah and as someone who has self-control a big no self-control you need deliverance hallelujah some people can sit down and eat like there is something wrong with them hallelujah and he will do everything to get his food so bible says that for some people their god is their hallelujah you see ah uh, <laughs> problem yes if you eat too much don't self control we need mommy hallelujah onu kwa tnasia odi banku 5 we are now a from. Hallelujah. And tomorrow he will be complaining. We need five. And we need two. Now we three. We need two. And we need three. Hallelujah. No self control. When we need to do it, he has to finish it. Hallelujah. He has no self control. When you see Kanon Kwan there, a sort of shoe for He's got money. Anyway, let me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Self control. Self control. Some people have no control of their self. It is what the self tells them to do that they do. They will just go full throttle because their emotions are controlling them. Hallelujah. So they, I feel like to do it, so they will do it. Regardless of the consequences. No self-control whatsoever. If he feels like to have sex, we are not dying, so we worry, so we worry. Yeah. So, yeah, Christ, it doesn't matter. Wow, hey, he, he, he has no control over the self. He wants to get married. She wants to get married. Eh, so, everything goes. Everything. If he, he throws good advice away, because he has no control over the self. No control. Hallelujah. You have to have dominion over yourself. You need to be able to control the self. And this comes not from you, but from the spirit that is living inside of you. He is the one who lets you know that this is wrong. Don't go there. So this fruit helps you to live a life dominating sin, overcoming sin. Because he will let you know and give you the strength to overcome. Hallelujah. Every evil inclination, every evil thought that, you know, we studied toxic thoughts recently at the House of Peace. Every toxic thought that will come, 
you will be able to reject it because you have self-control. Hallelujah. For some of us, as long as the thought comes, we have to do it. Amen. There is, you see, we can insult elderly people like we gave birth to them. No self-control, no respect. Hallelujah. Every sin is nice for us to commit. Hallelujah. But when we allow the Holy Spirit to influence us with this fruit, what happens is that he is now ruling in our lives, telling us what is right and what is wrong, and giving us the grace to overcome. Hallelujah. We don't indulge in anything. We see the food. In the past, when we were we, we will sit down and eat. But now, we have control over gluttony. So we won't eat like we are crazy. We won't waste money. Like, I told you some time ago that I had no self-control over techno, I mean like phones. I just have a new model. Hallelujah. I need it. I have to buy it. Not that I need it. I have to buy it. Hallelujah. So I will go and buy it. As long as I can afford, I will buy it. No self-control. Hallelujah. But now, it doesn't matter what model has come. Unless I need a phone that will do certain things that the one I'm holding is unable to. Or maybe the battery, I've changed the battery, it's weak now and I need to. Hallelujah. My last phone that I changed, for example, it got to a point, we also would drop it We would call a camera up here, not starting. Whether it's called sidiosis or whatever, I don't know. Then he begins to, he will, so every picture you take is like, <laughs> Hallelujah. You charge the battery, by midday is gone. You are looking at me. Hey, what's your phone? Yes, sir. Yes. Hallelujah. And that was when I realized that, in fact, I need a new phone. Amen. In, in fact, what I even did was I went to change the camera. When I traveled, I went to the Apple shop and I gave it to them. And they said, oh, yeah, the camera can be changed. They changed the camera for me, changed the battery for me, gave me a nice battery. And now it was okay. But I realized that the pictures were not better. And I used it for work as well. So I needed uh, better pictures. So I had to change. Amen. And that's when I changed it. Hallelujah. After that, there's a new model that has come. I know another one is coming this year. But I mean, I, I'm not even thinking about it. This one is working for me well. Hallelujah. I have control. I decide. Hallelujah. I don't really buy by impulse. Just uh, because everybody has a certain kind of uh, cloth, I have to. Oh. Everybody has a certain kind of something. I also need it. Amen. No self control. We can't control anything. Hallelujah. Why? Because we are not dependent on the Holy Spirit. He is the one who begins it inside of us. He is the one who begins to prompt us to give us the grace to overcome. Hallelujah. Our, 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 the things that really uh, prompt us to do the negative things. He's the one who comes in to really prompt us to stay away. Hallelujah. The, what the Spirit does here is that he influences the heart to make a Christian 
moderate in all indulgences. Teach him to restrain his passions and to govern himself right, to control his evil tendencies and to subdue all excessive affections. That's what he does. Hallelujah. What am I saying? I'm saying that the Holy Spirit will come and when it comes, it really, he, he really influences you as a Christian. He influences your heart in the decisions you make. Hallelujah. So you don't make decisions by heart. You don't make decisions by what you see. You make decisions by what he puts in your heart. Hallelujah. So what he puts in your heart is what you follow. How many of us are led by the Spirit? And before we got here, listen carefully. Before we got here, this is verse 23. Uh, 20, no, 23. 5.23. Galatians 5.23. But we, before we got to 5.23, those of us who pick scriptures by heart, from the, we go into the middle and then we pick and we make whatever we want to do with it. We got here by going through 16. Hallelujah. And 16, what does 16 say? Be led. Or, so I say, do what? Walk by the Spirit. If the Spirit is the one who is leading you, he says that you will not gratify. You will not gratify what? So the flesh is controlling me. It was controlling me to buy every phone. The flesh is controlling you. What you see with your eyes, the flesh is saying that I want this. Because you saw Banku 5, the flesh is saying that eat, 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 eat. And then you sit there and you obey the flesh. And then you go eat, 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 eat. Then you eat five. Then you are asking for more. Then you have the guts to say, oh, Oliver, to ask for more. So it is not wrong for me to ask for more. Hallelujah. Stop eating five banku. Keep some for tomorrow. Tell your stomach that you will have to eat in moderation. Hallelujah. Eating five banku do- doesn't make you a macho man. Hallelujah. It makes you poor. Because tomorrow you have to buy five more. You can't say Hallelujah. No self-control. If a woman see another woman having something, we go to on way. If I won't bang. If I won't bang. Hallelujah. You don't need a thing. But ah, I dear fatanu. Or eh, he wouldn't even think whether something should be fatanu. Same fatamio because I was here. What kind of life is that? No self control. Ask yourself, do I really need this? No self control because we are led by the flesh. We dig. De- the, the gratify the desires of the flesh. The flesh is desiring it. So we have to give it to it. No self-control. In the church today, no self-control. We come with ourselves full. So even when they ask us to sit here, no self-control to obey. Hallelujah. We'll just rebel and decide to sit where we want to sit. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit was telling you, hey, you, you said Alamo. Then the Holy Spirit will say, Alam, ring. Then the alarm will ring. 4.30 a.m. 5, 5 a.m. Then he will say, hey, there is prayer at 5.30. Wake up. No self-control. 
the body says, I want to sleep small. Hallelujah. I want to sleep small. You see, yesterday you were tired, oh. Don't you remember? Yesterday you were tired, pa. Ask yourself, when you wake up in the morning, where will you go? You go and continue the tiredness. It is only when you have to come and pray that you feel tired. If you were supposed to go again at 4.30 a.m., tell me what you would have done. Huh? Huh? You wouldn't even need an alarm. Hallelujah. We are better. We are better. We are better. Sorry. But we are better. Sorry. 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 Hallelujah. And in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A Christian who bears this fruit and watch it. You see, I want you to begin to, what I'm going to say right now, I want you to begin to look at yourself and ask yourself a question. Am I this? Am I bearing this fruit? A Christian who bears this fruit. Hallelujah. Is able to abstain from all exciting passions. Listen carefully. A Christian who bears this fruit is able to abstain, stay away, go away from all exciting passions. All exciting passions. Evil exciting passions, passions that excite them but take them away from God. He is able to abstain from them. He controls his temper. He is able to control his temper. And every single worldly passion. Many, you, need, you know, because of lack of self-control, because of lack of this fruit in our lives, we are able to say that that is what really makes us do these things. Because we have really, um, I mean, how do I say it? Comforted ourselves with the fact that we are human beings so we can't stop. That's why the Holy Spirit is there for you. If it was to be dependent on you, you will fail. If it was to be dependent on me, I will fail. Hallelujah. But that is why the Lord knows that it is going to be difficult for us. That is why he's provided the Holy Spirit for us to help us. Yet, we still insist that we don't need him. And we begin to do things by ourselves. Look, every Christian who lives by the self, who tries to really run his own life, will fail. Wouldn't you? It's impossible. You can be the bishop. You can be whoever you want to be. It's impossible. Because if you don't, if you are not led by the spirit, you will continue gratifying the desires of your simple nature. You will. It's not like you may. No, you will. Because if the Spirit of God is not there to really stop it or to help you to control those passions, you will continue to do them. You will. So, you see, you've been asking, but how can I overcome this? Allow the Spirit to control you. Allow the Holy Spirit. Because it doesn't matter how much prayer you get. You go back to it. Bible says that a dog goes back to his vomit. And it doesn't matter how you clean a pig. The first place he goes to. The 
water that you used to bath in, that water, you know, it, it, because maybe you, 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 bath, uh, you bathed him outside and it was in a, like in a dust or something, so the water now makes that dust become what? Mud. When you leave him, he lies down there and begins to go round. In the mud, and you say, So with you, hallelujah. He goes back right into it, right. Take your dog, go and buy whatever you want to clean him up, and don't put a chain and leave him. Where would he go? First place, dust. Hallelujah. And then you ask yourself, Come and cry in a hano. If you if you want to ask the dog then a hano, ask yourself first, me cry in a hano. After prayer, after deliverance, after whatever the Holy Spirit does in my life, the first place I go is back to my sin. No self control. And you are told, you see, if you pass by the drinking bar. The likelihood that you will go back to drink is great. Don't pass there. I will prefer to walk the long distance to get to my destination than to take a short distance that I'll be tempted to sin. I will prefer to wait 10 years for my husband to come or my wife to come than to take the shortcut and get married into trouble. That's what you don't understand. So you marry, two weeks you are divorced. And then you blame everybody else except you. Hallelujah. No self control. You don't yield to the spirit. You want to do things your own way. Every Christian who bears this fruit is able to yield to the Holy Spirit to help him control his emotions all the time. Every Christian who bears this fruit is able to yield to the Holy Spirit to help him control his emotions all the time. Many of us are so emotional. No self-control. We can't, you see, as long as our emotion dictates, we'll go. As long as he feels for something, he will do it. The Holy Spirit can say anything, they will still do it. Because they are not led by the Spirit of God. It's not that the Spirit of God is not there. He's there. But if you don't obey Him, He will force you. What are you saying? What I'm saying is that by the scripture that we looked at, it means that as a Christian, listen to me carefully. As a Christian, the flesh, the flesh is always trying to come up who controls the flesh is the devil so as a christian the devil is always trying to really cause you to sin he did it to jesus hallelujah jesus is more than a christian hallelujah he's god himself so stop you see let me tell you something stop (laughs) Hallelujah. Christians. Christian. You are a Christian, so I'm addressing you. Christian, sitting here this morning. Stop. I said do what? Stop telling yourself that where I have gotten to, the devil cannot come. 
he went close to Jesus to the extent that he tempted him. Hallelujah. Jesus is God himself. And after, listen carefully. You see, I want you to understand certain things this morning so that you stop really making yourself feel that you have arrived. You have not. Watch it closely. Watch it what? What I'm going to tell you, I want you to pay attention. If you are paying attention to the next statement I'm going to make, it will help you a lot in seeking the Holy Spirit and depending absolutely on Him. Now listen to me. The devil, Jesus had walked around for how many years? 30 years. We never heard the devil going to tempt him. Did you hear that? Did you, have you ever seen that in your Bible? That Jesus was tempted by the devil before he was 30? Okay. But when he was 30, and he had been baptized, and affirmed and confirmed by the Holy Spirit who he is, and had gone to fast for 40 days and 40 nights. That's when the devil came. It is in the moment you feel so anointed that your greatest temptation will come. The moment that you felt that I have fasted, I have waited before the Lord, that is when your greatest temptation will come. It is easy to allow pride to set in in those moments. It is easy to depend on the self in those moments because we think that we've arrived so we can do things by ourselves. Oh, wow. You see, me, I had a prophecy yesterday that I am so, so, and so. And then, you see, me, I fasted the last two weeks, three weeks. I have waited before the Lord. I am powerful. That's when the devil will come. And come and try whether you are indeed powerful. But many of us make the mistake of depending on the self. I'll tell you a story. When we started this church. When we started and... uh, God began to move and we saw God healing I mean massive healings I mean God was doing things and he's still doing things amen but those moments were the early days that we were seeing really the power of God move one of those days somebody came and had an issue and we had to pray for uh, with her and we're in my office and we began to pray listen carefully we had begun to see God do mighty things beautiful things hallelujah there are testimonies in this house testimonies People come, they take and they go. How many months ago? Your friend, when was that? When did, he, when did she come here? Yeah, I think around late November, early December, there about. One Saturday, and after that day, she's never stayed here again. She just came here. Me, yeah, I don't know her. We, we did... Uh, at the service prayer meeting we closed then I was in the office she came with a friend and she said this is my friend though she's married for how many years? 8 years nothing is happening hallelujah so she came and then she told us and I told her that we don't do magic here hallelujah 
you were sitting there i told her i told her in the face i said we don't do magic here if only you will believe god will bless you and we prayed a short prayer and she left eight years what happened she called her and she said i'm pregnant i'll come to your church hallelujah it's not about coming to our church it's about serving jesus wherever you are after eight years you are called why are you over to me of i said look there's no magic it is only jesus who does it amen so we prayed and she left a text message in the middle of Hallelujah. So things have happened. But then, we have seen many things. And the next thing is you may think that because of all this, you are somebody. But I'm telling you, I am nobody. I want you to understand. I am. I said I am. Uh huh. I, I want that to be established in your spirit. I am your pastor, led by the Spirit of God. If he leaves, me and you will be in trouble. We began to pray for this person in my office, downstairs. The moment I said in the name of Jesus, You spirit tormenting this life. The first thing he asked was, Who are you? The spirit asked me, Who are you? You, you are small. You can't do anything. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what the spirit said. He said, Who are you? You are small. You can't do anything. And I looked at the person standing there and could discern the spirit that is speaking through the, that person. And seriously, I discern it's, it's uh, I don't know, I don't want to go there. <laughs> I don't want to go into the details. But the next thing, listen to me carefully. The next thing that came into my life is what she's saying. I mean, I just started, what is she saying? What, what does, who does she think he, she is? But immediately, the Holy Spirit prompted me. So my next words, when I opened my mouth, the words I said was that, I am nobody without the Holy Spirit. And I come against you, not by my strength, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. And by the power released unto me when Jesus died on your master satan and by this power i command you to leave this person the person who said me i'm small began to shout and then be, take the whole office for for herself and i said uh-huh listen he tempted me to be proud and come with my strength and nothing would have happened if i had said oh but you, who do you think, I have really done this, I have really done this, then you, you, I would have been in trouble. But immediately, I made the spirit understand that it's not about me and you. It's about you and him. As for me, I'm a mediator. I'm just in the middle. He's just using me to really destroy your works. I made him understand that that power that is manifesting now is greater than your master satan this one is not me and you it's my master and your master hallelujah 
na amegani amegani vampim so hallelujah so i excluded myself and i allowed him to fight the battle hallelujah listen we need to understand that we have to allow the holy spirit to do the work it's not about you if it's about you you will fail you will eat, you will continue after this message you still eat five banku after the, you will still eat it how many times have you heard this message but you still eat because you depending on the self a comedy media medi hallelujah mehu five i will eat hallelujah but the holy spirit is prompting you at the what say oh it won't be not you hallelujah beloved in the lord let us be careful the worldly passions will rise up in us the flesh will continue to come but we don't have to gratify the desires of our sinful nature the flesh will continue to press us but we don't have to submit to it we have to allow the holy spirit to prompt us and to obey him to overcome that desire of the flesh hallelujah if we do that we see that spirit or the fruit of self-control manifesting as a christian we need to have self-control hallelujah some people have no self-control at all. Like I said at the beginning, peninkra kasajo or the peninkra size when you size. No respect, no self-control. Hallelujah. It we come and say afedru. We ma afedru. Hallelujah. Pegeti. It's like they have taken pegeti. They run to the toilet. Hallelujah. They run to do what evil they have to do. No self-control. Take purgative and see whether you can control. Hallelujah. You disgrace yourself. Hallelujah. Don't take purgative. (laughs) Allow the spirit of God to run your life for you. Amen. Amen. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. This fruit of faithfulness is about our faithfulness to God and to man. Look, we are expected as Christians to bear this fruit of faithfulness. We ought to live a faithful life. People would have to be able to trust us. God would have to be able to trust us. So he can confide in us. Hallelujah. There are Christians you can never confide in. There are Christians who will say this in the morning and say something else in the evening. They are not faithful. They are not trustworthy. Hallelujah. 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 We ought to be faithful to men. When we say one thing, we ought to be able to stick by it. We are not faithful even to the church that even blesses us. God uses a, a, I mean, a church to bless us. He uses what a man to bless us. He uses your boss in the office to bless you. He uses your neighbor to bless you. But you are never trustworthy. You are never faithful. Hallelujah. Everything we do is wrong. Amen. Listen. When you are faithful to your words, like faithful to the vows you made, you never divorce. True or false? We say one thing. You see, we say one thing with our right side of the mouth, 
and say something else with the left side of the mouth. Never faithful, never trustworthy. But as a Christian, we have to bear this fruit of faithfulness. Remaining faithful in every circumstance. Sticking by. You see, Jesus was faithful unto death. He was faithful unto death. To his father. It is painful to die the death he died. Yet he was what? Faithful. So he said, if I am depending on myself and my instincts and my feelings and my emotions, I will not go to this cross. But I told you before time began, when you asked me to go, I said I will go. Hallelujah. So I will be faithful to my word and die this kind of death. How many of us said one day that we want to do something in this church? Huh? Lift up your hand, let me see. And then today, where are you? What are you doing? The thing that you yourself use your mouth to say, when we ask you to do it now, you get angry. You said I'll be an usher. Come to church and usher is a problem. True or false? When there are days we come to this church and there's not even one usher. One. One, one, one. But they stood here and said they are ushers. Amen. Some people sing only on Sunday. Faithfulness. They said it. We'll be faithful till the end. What end? Hallelujah. Some people, yeah, I will do something for the church, but they've never done anything. They've never done anything. All that they know. Come on. Hallelujah. Faithfulness. We are never faithful to our neighbors. Never faithful in the office. So people see us. They, they look at us and say, this one, does he say he's a Christian? Didn't he say that yesterday? Didn't he promise? But where is he today? Amen. Hallelujah. You see, it is something, the fruit of the Spirit shows who you are. The fruit you bear will show. Because as Christians, all these are supposed to be seen in our lives. Our yes should be yes and our no should be no. We have to be faithful, even in difficult circumstances. We have to be faithful to God and to man. We have to. We have to. We cannot say we are faithful today and tomorrow we are something else. So we are able to say, I will, I will do. I, but let us go through a small crisis. Small challenge. Faithfulness vanishes to thin air. Just look, are you bearing that fruit? Are you a Christian who sticks by your word? Can we take you serious for what you say? Can we trust you for what you said you will do? Can we? Hallelujah. Can the church trust you for what you said you will do? I'm asking you. Are you faithful? Are we faithful? Hallelujah. We signed up to something when we came to Christ. We signed up to something when we joined the church. We signed up to something. Are we, do we remain faithful to what we signed up to? If it is a worldly contract, if you are unfaithful to that contract, what happens? There's always a clause. Always. Hmm? 
Let us ask ourselves. With all the thoughts that are going on in your mind. What did you sign up to? What did you say to yourself and to God and to man that I will do? A faithful person sticks to his word. A faithful person does not change his words when calamity comes. When trouble comes, he doesn't change his words. He remains true to what he said. No matter what happens, he says, I gave my word and I will stick with my word. You are my friend. You are my friend. And no matter what you've done to me, you are my friend. You don't do that because you want to do, but the Spirit of God, through the fruit of faithfulness, enables you to do. When we are offended a little bit by our friends, we give up on them. Give up. We are only friends when everything is fine. When things are not going the way we want, we are no more friends. But we are Christians. Hmm. Let's think. Beloved, there is work to be done. Let me take on the last one. Gentleness. Gentleness is not, hallelujah, having a superior attitude or demanding our rights. You know some people, they demand their rights too. Monday. Pe, 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 pe. Hallelujah. And also, let me let me let me quickly say this. Gentleness, because some people misconstrue this. Gentleness is not passiveness or timidity. Some people they are timid. Instead of changing, they think they are gentle. You are timid. Hallelujah. I'll show you who a gentle person is. Hallelujah. It's not because you are passive to everything. Oh, just let it go. And then as for me, I, mean, I don't care about this one. I mean, you are passive to everything. No, that's not gentleness. A gentle person will react to certain things at the right time. Hallelujah. A gentle person, when he's offended... He's not really saying, being passive about it, but being straight to it. Hallelujah. That's a gentle person. But he say it in a gentle way. In a way that will bring sense to you. Hallelujah. A gentle person is not somebody who is like, hey, I demand. I demand my respect you don't respect me I demand it you see I'm a gentleman and you ought to respect me he doesn't demand it hallelujah even in the state of offense a gentle person listen to me carefully a gentle person not that he doesn't get offended though he will be offended and he will react the right way. He will react the right way. He will 
address the issues they don't allow their emotions to get into the picture they are you see they are very very straight saying what they want to say without any showing any emotions they are just they, you see it's like nothing has happened but they are telling you sense they are putting something to you but they are not angry hallelujah amen they can even be angry but angry for the right cause that's a gentle person a gentle person you see a gentle person is not somebody who in odd, instead of him getting angry over an, an issue and addressing it he overlooks it he's passive about it and he goes gossiping that's not a gentle person a gentle person will look into your face and will tell you out of love for what you have done wrong not really being uh, brute about it or being harsh about it but he will be telling you and bringing everything to the fore to let you understand this is not right that's a gentle person a gentle person is the one that carries himself the right way not somebody who carries himself overboard he's carrying himself the right way the way of the lord hallelujah hallelujah because you are a gentle person you will react to an issue to reflect christ The problem is there, yes. But how do you react to it? Do you react to it to reflect your emotions or to reflect Christ? Christ is seen in everything a gentle person does. Hallelujah. Hey, but can I get angry? Of course you can. Because Jesus is your example. What did he do when he went to the church? Hallelujah. That's gentility at its highest level. Oh, yes. Wasn't Jesus a gentleman? But what did he do? When he, saw, when he saw a wrong happening. And you think that was the first day he saw it? He's been preaching about it over time. You see that's a gentle person he's been cautioning over time but he sees that the people are never ready to and he would not really overlook it for other people to be taken advantage of because what they were doing was taking advantage of people using the name of god using the name of his father hallelujah to take advantage of people you see we ought to stand up and begin to talk about certain things hallelujah being passive about it. Hey, this is not my case. Hallelujah. That's what Atamels did. That's not a gentleman. <laughs> I'm not condemning him, but I'm showing you. Hallelujah. No, I'm sh- you see, the, the reason I mentioned this one, and I'm, you see, I'm looking at two very nice gentlemen. Jesus and him. Hey, he, was, he was the gentleman's gentleman. You don't know him. We lived in the same estate, so I know him. Hey, Orba. Very gentle. I remember, you know, I met him at the estate office once, and the way he... I mean, the man wouldn't carry himself like... At that time, he wasn't the president. He had lost... Uh, uh, the first time he lost, I mean, after being vice president, he lost. You wouldn't even think that this was the vice president of the nation or the a presidential candidate of a party that lost. No. He was gentle. 
people who know him because i've spoken to people who really know him that man it's sad that he died but he's a gentleman but the fact that <laughs> i mean i think one man can acquire especially when you are anyway you, let's leave it here but what i'm trying to say is that the fact that you were passive about something doesn't make you a gentleman hallelujah you ought to really and i'm not saying that everything put your mouth in it there are some things you have to keep quiet monetary and then address it at the right time don't be harsh don't be rude don't just really jump into everything at any time jesus had seen this over, over time hallelujah he has do you think jesus was not going to the temple he was consistently going to the temple so he had seen it all the time did he condemn them on the first day did he overturn their tables on the first day no i believe you know bible says that everything that jesus did if everything was written we wouldn't have enough bibles <laughs> enough place to write them so i believe over the over time and and you watch it because it at this time it means that he has seen it over time he didn't like it over time he probably and i believe that he had addressed it in a certain way but just like the way the way they were treating him they didn't care because if you look at his teaching he was always tra- talking to the uh the, the the jews that don't take advantage of the poor don't take advantage and that's exactly what they were doing so he was addressing the issue but they were not minding him so it got to a time a gentleman will have to put some actions to play because he has to now begin to do certain things hallelujah Do you really understand? So the fact that you are passive about it and you see the wrong and you don't say anything about it, you don't do anything about it, doesn't make you a gentleman. You cannot make passiveness gentility. Hallelujah. We ought as Christians who are exhibiting or bearing the fruit of gentleness, we will gentle in all manner of ways but we will not overlook what we need to really address and in all this we do it from a place of love because if you know hallelujah let me tell you what a a gentle Christian will do he will do evangelism all the time You see, your amen is weak. I said, your amen is what? Why am I saying that a gentle Christian will do evangelism all the time? Because he sees the wrong. He knows where the people are going. He doesn't want them to go there. He has to address it. And the only way he can address it is by evangelizing to these people. Not criticizing them. Not insulting them not making them not judging them making them look so bad what they're doing is bad and needs to be addressed and god has given us a way to address hallelujah beloved in the lord for what fruit are we bearing Are we still manifesting the works of the flesh or bearing the fruit of the Spirit? Let us look into our lives this morning. I'm just about closing. Let's look into our lives this morning and begin to ask ourselves these questions. Who am I? Am I a believer, a Christian? If I am a Christian, what comes out of me? 
what is the character that I show? Do I still go around as a Christian manifesting the works of the flesh or bearing the fruit of the Spirit? Just ask yourself, We are not Christians because we say so. We are Christians because we live it. The word itself came when some people were seen manifesting certain character and attitudes that the people saw in Jesus. Now, are you a reflection of Jesus Christ? Are you a reflection of Jesus Christ? Is that what you see? Remember, Jesus is expecting to see this fruit in your life and in my life. We know, listen, we, we know walking around calling ourselves Christians for nothing. There is a responsibility. We have to show something. We have to manifest something. And Jesus is not looking for leaves. He's not looking at how many times we come to church. He's looking at what we do with the word. He's not looking at you reading the Bible. Or he's looking at what you do with what you read. What do you do with it? I salute you. You do your devotion every morning. But after that, what do you do with it? Hallelujah. I love you for reading the Bible, sharing your devotion with your leader. I love you for doing that. But the question is, after reading and sharing, do you live that word? Do you? That is what matters. Hallelujah. It is not enough to call yourself a Christian and not bear the fruit of the Spirit. It is not enough to call yourself a Christian but still manifest the works of the flesh. It's contradicting what you are saying. It is. Because you are saying I am this but what we see, you can say that I'm yellow. But what I see is not yellow. What I see is red. Or maybe blue. Hallelujah. Who do you say you are? And how do people see you? And how does Christ see you? If he would come today, will he get a fruit? To plug or to take from you or he will curse you to die I don't know you know I don't know that about you but you know begin to look at them again to look at all these again and ask yourself and look at yourself if you are not bearing this fruit now ask yourself whether you love ask yourself whether you are filled with joy Paul said it and I love it rejoice always and I say it again thank you <laughs> Do you understand the song? 
fahu dini enije wama menya wonimo fahu di finkwa sum madiswa juju yi miye kwa biu maye onya me ba we should be them na wotu wodo bi mpaso hallelujah we onya me ba e wo bi mpaso hallelujah Hello. <laughs> I'm preaching there. <laughs> no, I finished show. <laughs> Hallelujah. Minyo bonsa makwe bio. And so ti asori de, mo so ti ka mu ba. O nyame ba, e suba eni. Ha? Wo ti ha? Wo mferi nyame, wo nsuro nyame, wo ti asori de, wo so ti ka mu. When did this building become a car? When did this building become a car? The little things you are taking for granted, they are the ones that will take you to hell. Hallelujah. The little lies. Hallelujah. I know you are struggling with certain things. I know, but let us make the effort to cry unto him to deliver us, to set us free. Hallelujah. I'm not, I'm not here judging you this morning. I'm here telling you that if you don't pay attention now, there will be a day you'll be judged based on this. That's it. You see, it's so simple. You, can, you see, what, let me tell you, one thing that has really been hard for us Christians is the fact that Jesus is not punishing us now. So it has made us complacent. It has made us begin to have thoughts that nothing will happen. It's not, you see, when you were a child and you were doing bad things, it's not that your father hasn't seen you. Every day he sees it. He wants you in one way or the other. Oh, no, no, I have a don't know what Until the day you come and the king is like from here to there. That's when you see that there's a father in the house. Hallelujah. Until the day you get a just punishment for what you've been doing, that's when you see that indeed there was judgment coming. So the fact that he didn't punish you the first day, the fact that when you lied and when I lied, I didn't fall like, uh, what, what's the name? Ananias and the, uh, uh, Sapphira, the wife doesn't mean that God is asleep. He's full awake. Hallelujah. Let me finish with this scripture. Let's go to First Peter. I'm finishing with this. Hmm. Amen. Are we here? Are we indeed here? Amen. Chapter 3, verse 9. No, no, no. Second, second. Sorry. Second Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not what? In keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you. In fact, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about me. He's patient with me, 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 me. Hallelujah. Not wanting me to perish, but 
wanting me to come to repentance. That's the way I see it. So the Lord is not slow because he said that he will punish you for your sins and it has not come. You think, oh, Onyamikra. So in, in, in Akan, we are Onyamikra, we are Onyamikra, we are Onyamikra, we are but he's saying that he is not slow he is not what but he is patient with you and me he doesn't want us to perish so he's taking his time so when he went and the tree was not bearing the, uh, the husbandman the, the farmer told the owner that please Give me one more year. Let me put more fertilizer. Hallelujah. That's how God, he doesn't, the, 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 he doesn't want that tree to die. He doesn't want to curse it. He doesn't want to destroy it. Do you think this, that was the first day Jesus saw that tree that he cursed? He's been going up and down. He's been seeing that tree. Why not just also? Hallelujah. So one day, he said one word. And that was the end of that tree. There is a day coming, beloved in the Lord. A day that a master will come and judge us all. There is a day coming. But you see, you can't do any of this with your own strength. You need him. That is why you need to submit to him. This morning you are saying, but how can I bear this fruit? The first step is to give your life to Christ. Absolutely, totally. Yield unto Him. That's the first step. That is the first thing to do. You are sitting here this morning. And He's saying that He doesn't want you to perish. It's not that He's slow. It's not that because you sit in church doing everything that you're doing, God is slow. God doesn't, no, he doesn't want you to perish. He wants you to change. He doesn't want you to perish. He wants everyone to come to repentance. And this morning, he's looking for those who will repent and yield unto him. He's looking for those people. He's waiting for those people. He is waiting. He's waiting. He is waiting. But if you don't, then verse 20 will come. Uh, I said verse 20. Verse 10 will come. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives. As you look forward to the day of God and Spirit's coming, that they will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. Where righteousness does what? So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, sleep. Do what you like. But do what? Make every effort to be found. Sixteen. 
Did we read 15? Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means what? Just as our dear brother Paul also wrote to you about the wisdom that God gave him. We're not going to go into what Paul said. But I want to stay at 15. The Lord's patience. He's been patient with you and me. And his patience means salvation. He wants us to take a step and make peace with him. He gives you an opportunity this morning. An opportunity to make amends. Not by what you can do, but just availing yourself to him. Just repenting and saying that here am I. Here I am. Take me. You are here this morning. If Jesus would come today, if this day we are talking about had been today, what would happen to you? Where will you go? I don't know about <laughs> Jesus is calling and we have to respond beloved in the Lord this is to all of us that we have to repent if you have not made him your Lord and Savior this is the moment or you have given your life to him but you've gone astray and you've not lived your life for him it's an opportunity for you to make amends and to run back to him and say I repent of my weakness I commit myself to you again but this is to somebody here I don't know who that person is I don't know but I feel strongly that there is somebody here this morning looking up, even sitting in church he's still looking up to a sin he's going to commit I don't know who you are I don't know I don't know who that person is I feel the Lord is saying there's somebody here this morning looking for the mechanism or share nim bonibia or quacoye, or take a nagin boni nevoso. I dare no quacoye ne boni. But I know the nagin was to see here. God is calling you to repent and to say that I will go and do it again. It probably is not today that you are going to commit it, but you're looking up to some kind of bad lifestyle or something bad that you have to go. If you are here and you are in the first group, that is you never know Christ and you want to really commit your life to him, I want you to lift up your hands. Or you are here in the second group. You have given your life to Christ, but you are not living for him. But today, the word of God that has come to you really speaks to your spirit and your life that you have to really repent and submit to him totally if you are here like that we're not saying you are not a, you have not committed your life you have not given your life to christ you have but you don't live for him but from today you want to make a decision to live for him lift up your hand don't feel ashamed it's a life decision it's a decision that you have to make if you don't make it today probably there would not be an opportunity for you to make it again what about if jesus comes tonight or the moment after the service 
or something bad happens to you after the service, where are you going? Have you made peace with him? Have you made peace with him? Beloved, if you are here and you want to make that decision, we we'll give you an opportunity. Just stand up where you are. Just don't don't be ashamed. Don't worry about anybody or what anyone will say. Just just lift up your hands and stand up. Bible says that if you are ashamed of me, I will also be ashamed of you when I come in my glory. Don't be ashamed of him before men. Don't think that what will people say. Don't worry about that worry about what Jesus will say. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now wherever you are standing, I just want you, just stand up, just stand up. Just stand up. Not everyone, I want those who really are making that commitment. Stand up on your feet. And I want you, as you are standing up, I want you to pray in your own way and talk to him he loves you i give you a minute to repent and tell him tell him that i repent this world is for someone who he's coming one day bible says that within a twinkle of an eye he will appear So tell him, I repent. I admit my weakness and I repent of my sins. Tell him I commit my life to you. That you take me and you make me your own. Tell him that Lord, I have not been able to walk right with you. But from today, help me. I need you. I need your Holy Spirit to help me. Thank you, Jesus. Now, beloved, say this after me. And I want the whole church to support them in saying this. Jesus. Jesus. I thank you this morning. I thank you this morning. For my life. For my life. I thank you. I thank you. That in my sinful condition. You did not destroy me. You did not destroy me. I thank you. I thank you. That rather, that rather you sent you were sent into this world. You were sent into this world. To die for me. To die for me. I thank you. I thank you. For the sacrifice that you made. For the sacrifice that you made. To save me. To save me. This morning. This morning. I accept that sacrifice. I accept that sacrifice. And I commit my life to you. And I commit my life to you. Forgive me. Every sin that I have committed, I repent of them all. And I ask you that accept me as your child today. Make me a son. And from today, let your spirit live in me and help me. To live live my life, life, to honor you, to to glorify you, you, and to bring you praise. praise. From today, today, I deny deny myself. myself. I carry my cross cross, and I follow you. you. Lead me me by your spirit spirit. from today today until you come. To take me into heaven. I thank you that you have heard me and you have saved me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now let me pray. Father, I thank you for these lovely people. People who have come to the point of saying that we never knew you, so we give our life to you today. And others who are saying that we have known you, but we have not lived right for you. And we yield unto you today. Father, in the name of Jesus, your word says that 
whosoever comes to you, you will by no means cast away. So in the name of Jesus, I pray for these ones that have mercy on them. Help them to walk faithfully before you. Help them supply everything that they need by the power of your spirit unto these ones so they will bear the fruit of the spirit but will not manifest the works of the flesh. From today, take hold of them and help them in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus this morning. We honor you for where you have brought us to. Many of us are here and we have not been able to bear the fruit of the Spirit. But we cry unto you this morning, availing ourselves to you and asking you that you would help us, oh Lord, to bear the fruit of the Spirit. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that you consistently speak to us so we could walk in your ways. We have lived our own lives, walked in our own ways. But today, in this five, six weeks that you have spoken to us, that we don't have to lay our lives deceiving ourselves that we belong to you when we don't. I pray in the name of Jesus. You have said that by the works, by our works, by our fruit, we shall be known. Father, our fruit does not show that we belong to you. So we pray in the name of Jesus that Lord, you will have mercy on us and you will help us like the farmer told the owner. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that this year may you fertilize us may you give us everything that it takes lord for us to bear fruit i pray in the name of jesus may you come next year to find out that we are bearing fruit because this year you are putting a lot of fertilizer you are putting a lot of nutrients in us give us everything that we need to have everything that will help us to bear fruit lord do it we avail ourselves to you we yield unto you you are telling us if we didn't know you are now showing us and we ask you lord help us father help us to bear every fruit of the spirit Holy Spirit, I ask you, may we not only be hearers of the word, may we see the agency in the spirit, may we see the agency in the atmosphere, may we see what is going on around us. You told the Jews, Jesus, you told the Sahira, you told the people in your time. That when they see the weather, they can predict that it's going to rain. But they see the times that we are walking in. But we still cannot discern that we are in the end times. That you are coming again and you will judge us. May we not be indifferent to the season we are in. May we not be indifferent to the times we are in. May we not be complacent in our work with you. May we not take anything for granted. May we be serious. And make every effort, Lord. Every effort that we have to make. Not by our strength. But by the power of the Spirit. May we be obedient to your Holy Spirit. And what he teaches us. May we be obedient to his promptings. Some of us, we are dead and we cannot even hear the promptings. Our minds are seared, our hearts are seared and we don't even feel any prompting from the Holy Spirit. But I pray this morning in Jesus' name that activate us again. Quicken us again. May we be sensitive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit and may we begin to bear fruit. May we begin to bear fruit, Spirit of God. 
help us, lead us, direct us. We thank you this morning. We bless you and glorify you. May everyone here understand and know that there is a day coming that we will give an account of our lives. I thank you. I honor you. In Jesus' name, Amen.